Hey guys, what's up? My name is Marcus and you're watching Roads Untraveled. Right now we are standing in front of McLaren's new entry-level sports car, the 570S. We have an interview lined up with Ali Henderson and Frank Stephenson, the lead designer of McLaren. One of his cars that he is famous for designing is this car as well as the McLaren P1. Let's go check it out. We are at Luxury Supercar Weekend. We are here in the McLaren tent with Frank Stephenson. Mm -hmm. You are the creative director for McLaren. Correct, right? That's correct, yeah. So last night at the Inform party, you gave a very inspiring speech, and I think what I appreciate most about it was you you said that there's still room at the top for creative people. Because I mean that's obviously something that yeah. is not fostered as greatly within our culture. Tell us with uh, where being creative has gotten you. Can you give us a, a list of the cars that you created? Um, yeah, well, <clears throat> again, create, creativity, regretfully, is not really fostered as much as it should be because I think it's the future. Famously, Einstein said that creativity is much more important than intelligence because if you don't have the idea in the first place, it's going to be very difficult to create something. So a lot of it is thinking out of the box and being innovative and coming up with solutions that seem impossible at the beginning. Um, but everything I've done pretty much, I've done a, a pretty wide bandwidth of design, so I've done uh, BMW X5, the Mini Cooper, the new generation, um, the Ferrari F430, uh, the Ferrari Super Enzo, the Maserati MC12, the Maserati Grand Sport, uh, the Fiat 500, uh, a couple Alphas, uh, and, and McLarens. So, so that is quite the list. Yeah. That's quite the list. How did you get involved with McLaren? Well, uh, I thought I was working in, in, in paradise. I said that last night. That was uh, the ultimate job for a designer. I think it's design a, a very high-end uh, sports car, which would be a Ferrari back in that time. And I had that job. I was offered it after I did the Mini, which turned out to be very successful in a lot of different countries around Europe and really took off well in North America. So it kind of got me out there as, uh, as a more known designer. I got a call from Italy and of course that seemed like paradise to me and uh, to be able to design uh, that high-end type of vehicle. But when I was offered a job at McLaren, it came sort of out of the blue and, and they said that we're going to start an automotive company and uh, we'd like to branch off from Formula One, not just be dedicated to, to one type of uh, automobiles. And uh, the, the, the brief to be able to design a car fresh from a clean sheet of paper is the ultimate design uh, brief for a designer to, to take on. It means you really get to express yourself. You don't have to base it on former DNA of a company or make it look like something that they've already done. And that kind of uh, challenge was absolutely the ultimate for me. So uh, more than paradise, I'm in heaven now. <laughs> Not a bad place to be. No. So what I pretty much have been in love with all my life is nature. And I love uh, animals. I love, I love everything about nature, and countrysides and everything. So um, you can get a heck of a lot of inspiration from that kind of that source there. And uh, I've, I've done that, I've tried to go that, that route as sort of our inspiration for design for McLaren's because it's the only type of inspiration that I find that is actually timeless. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if you design something, you want it to last. You don't want it to be in one day and out the next or, you know, um, and that doesn't feel good if you buy something and suddenly it's out of date. Yeah. The ultimate thing with a designer is you're really never finished with it. You never really fall in love with it because you can always have a better idea. Yeah. If you don't, you might as well hang up your pen and pencil and go home. Uh, but there's always something better you can do it. It's only when the, uh, the bean counters or the engineers pull the pencil out of your hand that you really stop designing the car. Because you'll always want to improve it. And um, again, you only hope that people like it. So it's a feeling, it's a subjective thing. So tell uh, me, what's the vision for uh, McLaren moving forward? Uh, well, we're basically on the path of doing cars that work more so than what they look like. So that's kind of uh, an oxymoron that you want to sell a product to a person and make them fall in love with it, but you're actually not worried about how it looks. But in fact, the kind of design language that we're using, which is biomimicry, tends to make the product look unique and beautiful in its own right. If it performs well, it'll look well. Of course, you know, we're talking today about autonomous vehicles that drive themselves. That would be the ultimate boring car for me because a car like this, you want to hear it and um, you want to be able to control it. There might be instances when you can let the car drive you, maybe to teach you how to drive around the track better, or, you know, what gear, what, what uh, braking points, what lines, but that's only as a tool to make you as a driver 
um, a better person, a better driver and more involved with the car so you can learn. Um, we try to keep, like I said, very, very small teams because the design is more pure. Yeah. <clears throat> Bigger companies tend to use a lot more designers on projects and you get that feeling that the guy that did the front didn't talk to the guy in the back yeah. and the guy on the side wasn't involved with either one of them. Yeah. yeah, and that's like, um, you know, three different languages that don't really blend together. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's very chaotic design, but I think small teams, quick decisions, uh, everybody sort of blends together in different ways. We're very, all, all designers are very different in their own, you know, education and cultures and things like that. But if you can bring all those together and uh, take the best of each one, then you get things that are shocking, shockingly good. I mean, there's a funny thing because I love boats. I love uh, being on the river and going as slow as I can go. But like what I most enjoy is like a Sunday morning when I get up super early. I can get my bike out, my motorcycle and take it out and get a real good blast of adrenaline on country roads. Because the worst thing is racing or riding on the roads. That is where I really get nervous because, you know, you never know what the other guy's going to yeah. do and they oftentimes say, I didn't see you or whatever. You can't design full on every day of the week because you need that sort of uh, balance to your life. But um, if you can go flat out for five, six days a week and then have a bit of a recharge, and, you know, that's, I think that's the ultimate balance. The thing with designers, they never really do shut off anyways. You're always sort of like a, an open radar yeah. and you're always trying to get uh, inspiration from somewhere, you know, music or visual stuff or, or whatever, sensations and touching things. But it does help you to stay inspired. The problem is um, you have to force yourself to shut off sometimes because we don't work to the clock. We don't look at the clock when we're working. It's just, you know, we can't wait to get to work and we don't want to leave that yeah. kind of sensation. and. Uh, and, and, and ideation and, and, and thought, but um, when you do get away, you have to almost force yourself to, to do other things so that you do have that kind of creative energy ready to go again. Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no, just uh, if you like designing, you like drawing, uh, you like art, you like creating, being innovative, stay with it. Don't let anybody ever discourage you from it because you know it's so easy to, to lose. Uh, that, that momentum and that enthusiasm, but uh, there's, like I said, room at the top for everybody that's good at something, so, um, and, and if I wasn't a creative designer or somebody doing a creative profession, I'd be very, very frustrated, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks.